so it is a few days later and we are headed up to East Coast Gear Supply right now. I'm about two miles away from their shop. Uh, I'm gonna go pick up all these parts for the Tahoe. Since I've said that I'm going there to get all the parts, a lot of people have told me that this is the only place they go to get parts. And most of the time, they have East Coast build the rear end for them. They don't even mess with it. So I'm gonna go meet these guys, pick up some parts, maybe ask a couple questions, and then it is back to RPM Motorsports, start putting the bearings on all the new parts. A few moments later. Alright guys, so I just got all the parts from East Coast Gear Supply. I didn't take the GoPro inside because I didn't want it to be weird. But, this is East Coast Gear Supply. Pretty big shop. I think they said 6,000 square foot warehouse. So now, back in the car, 45 minute drive, back to the shop. And we're going to go press some bearings on so I can get this dip done today. Hello, sir. Look everyone, it's John Doc. Hi John Doc. I'm John Doc. Oh, okay. John Doc after hours. <laughs> What's up? Parts. Very nice. Very yes. nice. Right? Looks like you've been spending some money. Yes, I have. How long will this one last? Hopefully forever. Upgrade. That's upgrade. what you do. You break, is, and then you upgrade. This is very upgrade. So, all right, guys. We're back up here at RPM Motorsports, and I'm going to build what I can up here since there's a press, and I've got some of my tools up here as well. So, here's what we ended up with. We have an AAM 373 gear. So, this is like what GM uses from the factory is the strongest thing that you can get. Our Detroit True Track differential, and this is like a, a helical differential. This is for being abused. Got our master install kit, and I've got my old pinion here because I need to get the shim out from under the bearing. I'll show you how to do that right now. Okay, so here's the old pinion. I need to put this bearing splitter on the pinion, then we'll put it in the press, and we're gonna press the pinion down through the bearing. This is the pinion shim that we're looking for. So this is gonna go on our new pinion under our new pinion bearing. All right, so we've got our new shim installed with our new bearing. So this piece is ready to go. Okay, so the next step is we need to press our carrier bearings on. We're gonna use this old race to help push it on. Now that we've got our bearings on our carrier, we're gonna go back over to the table and put the ring gear on. All right, so a little quick tip. You ever hear someone say they have got a 10 bolt or a 12 bolt or a 14 bolt? That doesn't refer to the number of bolts on the cover. It refers to the amount of bolts that hold the ring gear to the carrier. So this is a 10 bolt. All right, so our ring gear bolts all get a dab of Loctite on them. And these are left hand threaded bolts, fine thread. So we're actually turning them like you're gonna be loosening the bolt. And most ring gears are gonna press onto the carrier by a little bit. So what you need to do is get all of your bolts started and then working across the carrier, tighten it down so that it tightens down evenly and flat. Now 
Now all we have to do is torque these down. All right, we are back at my shop. And thankfully I turned on the AC this morning. It's about one o'clock right now. It is 78 degrees in the shop. It's about 96 outside. So I'm really glad I turned that on. And I just want to mention something real quick. Some people are giving me hell about my American flag hanging the wrong way behind me. It's actually hanging the correct way if you look at it from outside the shop. So when I've got the doors open and the flag is hanging from outside the shop, it is correct, which is what I want. It's me inside the shop. It's thousands of people that pass by the shop every day. So it is correct, just so you know. Anyway, we have all of our parts laid out. Our new pinion with pinion bearing crush sleeve is on it. Our diff with the diff bearing is on it. Our new diff bearing races. This is our front pinion bearing and race. So we've got everything to start putting this thing together. First step is we have to put our races in. I already knocked the old ones out. So next thing we have to do is install the front and rear pinion race here. And uh, I've got a special tool for that. Luckily, I remembered to bring it home. So it's just a bunch of aluminum pucks, really, that you can hammer to death and not mess up the race. So my temporary diff will be removed and we will start installing our front and rear pinion races. And then after that, the front pinion bearing in with the new pinion seal, and then we will install the pinion into the diff housing. All right, so now that we have our front and rear pinion race installed, what I'm gonna do is grab the front pinion bearing and grease it. That has to be installed before you put the seal in the front of the diff housing. Okay, I've got the front pinion bearing sitting in the housing with grease on it. I'm gonna go ahead and put in the front seal. Now, the reason I grease the pinion bearings is we're gonna need to set preload on the bearings by rotational torque. So basically, if you put them in there dry, you can get a bit of a false reading. So we put a little bit of grease on them just so that everything turns easily. And uh, then we'll take our rotational torque reading to make sure that the preload on the bearings is right. All right, now that we have our front pinion bearing and pinion seal installed, we have to install the pinion into the housing. And this part's kind of hard because you have to crush a crush sleeve. So the crush sleeve sits here on the pinion, see, sits here on the pinion. And what this does is it crushes and it helps keep preload on the inner and outer pinion bearing. So I'll move the camera once I get everything set up in here and I'll show you how rotational torque changes as this adds preload to the bearings when we tighten the pinion flange down. Okay, so it's hard for me to get a good, a good camera angle, but hopefully you guys can see what I'm about to do. So we've got our pinion flange on here with our washer and pinion nut, and I'm just gonna start tightening it down and you'll see me grab this and pull it in and out. So what we're doing is we're actually pressing the front pinion bearing onto the pinion as the same time as we're kind of crushing everything together. So once you get rid of your free play, that's when we're gonna start spinning to set our preload for rotational torque.
took me a little while to get this to tighten up, mainly because the impact I have at my house is kind of crappy and I forgot my good one at the shop. But anyway, um, I forgot to bring my rotational torque gauge home with me too. So I'm gonna tell you guys how I do this without the gauge. Basically, you just wanna grab the pinion lightly and start to put pressure on it. If it takes more pressure to break away than it does to keep turning, that's usually about where I set them up. So you definitely want drag on this because this is what preloads your bearings. And being that everything is new, you want a little bit more because it'll loosen up. So normally you're 10 to 12 foot pounds of rotational torque, but if you don't have the gauge, if it takes you a little bit more effort to break it away than it does to keep rotating it, that's where you want to be. All right, now comes the fun part, and that's getting our shims set up for setting up our backlash on our ring gear. So basically what backlash is, is the amount of play between the pinion, sorry, I'm bad at pointing this. Backlash is the amount of space you have between the pinion gear and the ring gear. So when you get this up in there, I'll show you, you can rock it back and forth, and that's gonna be your backlash. And how you adjust that is you move the ring gear closer to the pinion and further away. So we have our stock shims here, and I usually start off by flipping them from side to side. So left goes right, right goes left, and that gets me pretty close for my first time. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is measure these, see how thick they are, and then I'm gonna put this thing up in there for the first time and see how far off the backlash is. All right, so already I noticed a problem. There's not a whole lot of preload on these side bearings. And the backlash is way, way loose. So I'm gonna tap this shim in the rest of the way just to be sure that it's that loose. But uh, looks like we're gonna have to make some major adjustments. This ring and pinion calls for setting up at four thousandths backlash. I usually like to go a little bit looser than that. I found when I set them up at four, they can whine a little bit. So I try to go between six and seven. So now that everything's in there and tight, it feels loose, but I'm gonna measure it just to see how loose it is. All right, so I've Got this set up so hopefully you guys can see it. So zero to about 14 is our backlash right now, which is way, way too much. So, and like I said before, backlash is the space that you have in between the two gears. So you have to set this up first, then you have to check your pattern, which we'll get into in a second. But what I need to do now, since I have too much room between them, is I need to move the whole diff over this way. So that means a thicker shim on this side, thinner on this side. Now most of this is guessing, but seeing as how I have to lose about eight thousandths backlash, I'll probably put eight thousandths worth of shim over here and take eight out on this side, and then we'll put it back together and see how it works. All right, so I made a shim pack change. I moved eight thousandths. You can see now we go from zero to nine. So we lost five thousandths. Need to lose about four more. So what I'll probably do is make about the same change I just did and move the ring gear just a little bit closer and then we should be all set up as far as our backlash goes. All right, so here's what we got. This is one of the original shims here. You can see it's one piece. Now what we have are these sandwich shims. So basically it's two parts and you put your shim pack in the middle and then you measure your overall thickness. This allows you to make small changes instead of having to have big shims and put them in a lathe and mill them down, now you have a bunch of small thin shims that you can stack up at different heights to get your shim thickness correct. So I made a change. I gotta go change the GoPro battery and we'll be right back. Carrier's back in with our new shim packs and it's got a bunch of preload on it so it's kinda hard for me to do this, but you can see right there we have exactly, and my light's gonna die too. We have exactly six thousandths backlash. Now that's what we want. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to throw some marking compound on the gear, rotate the gear over a couple times so we can see what the mesh pattern looks like and then I'll explain that to you. All right so before I say anything about this pattern I know I'm going to get some slack for this but let me explain first. I've set up a lot of rear ends and pattern is important 
but there's a couple things that are important and a couple things that really don't matter that much. And I know I'm gonna get heat for it, but I'm gonna tell you my way of doing this. So when you're looking at your pattern, it's where the paint has worn away. Now the key here is you do not want it running off the top edge of the gear and you don't want it jammed down in the valley of the gear either. You want a nice D-shaped pattern in the middle of your tooth. And now you need to check both sides. So when I rotate this over, on the back side, you can see I do not have a great D-shaped pattern and it's running off the back edge of the gear. But also notice it's in the center of the tooth. I found that this is normally okay. So to prove myself, I'm gonna put it together just like it is running down the road and when it howls like crazy, then y'all can tell me I'm wrong. But the key that I always go by is you do not want it running off the top of the gear and you do not want it jammed in the valley of the gear. If you get a nice D-shaped pattern, you're in really good shape. I think I'm fine with what I got right now. So what I need to do is put the axles back in it, brakes, cover, drive shaft, pan hard bar, sway bar, and all that crap, which you guys don't really need to see me do. So anyway, that's really a basic setup uh, of how to do gears, a little quick explanation. And I don't want this video to be three hours long, so I'm gonna cut it off here, I'm gonna put this back together, and then I'm gonna put some break-in miles on this thing, and I'll do a review of how everything went. And like I said, this is a Detroit True Track with AAM gears, so this should be really good stuff. I should be good to go, no worries. So I'm gonna finish slapping this thing together, and I wanna thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, please be sure to comment below. I try to respond to every comment that I get, and if I don't respond, I usually give it a thumbs up anyway. So. I read them all. Uh, guys, be ready for some Packard videos too. I got some cash freed up luckily, so I got some spending money, and uh, I'm gonna start on the green Packard after I tear the other two apart. So as always, there is a merchandise link in the description below. Thank you guys for watching, we'll see you next time.